In previous video lectures, we have covered immunotechniques based on precipitation and agglutination reactions. There we saw that antigen-antibody reactions results in the formation of large immune complexes or antigen-antibody complexes. These immune complexes are large enough and we can observe them by naked eyes. But, how to detect the presence of antigen, or, antibodies in case, when antigen-antibody interactions do occur, but, they are not visible. This may be because the test antigen or antibody is present in very low concentration. The precipitation and agglutination immunotechniques will not detect individual antigen-antibody interactions. Two most popular techniques are radioimmunoassay and enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. RIA and ELISA are labeled, or, tag immunoassays. Today we will understand, what do we mean by labeled or tag immunoassay? What role does radioisodeps and enzymes have, in these assays? Let's begin. Assay means analysis, or, simply, a test. The term immune reflects that, these tests are related to our immune system, and, its mechanism of action. Immunoassay can be defined as, the technique or test, to detect the presence, or, quantity of, substances such as, hormones, drugs, and specific proteins based on, specific antigen-antibody binding reactions. These substances can act as antigen, or, antibody. Now, next question is, what do we mean by tag, or, labeled immunoassay? Suppose this is an antigen, immobilized in a microtiter well. This is the specific antibody to the given antigen. We add this antibody to the microtiter well. What will happen? Since this antibody is specific to the given antigen, it binds to the antigen. Now, this binding is not visible to us, but it took place. So, what can we do to confirm that binding has occurred? Again this is a microtiter well containing the same immobilized antigen. And this is the specific antibody to this antigen. But this time, this antibody is tagged, or, labeled. By tagged, or, labeled we mean that, this antibody is bound covalently to a detectable tag. This tag can be a radioisotope, enzyme etc. We will discuss them further shortly. Now, when we add this tagged, or, labeled antibody to the microtiter well, the antibody will bind its specific antigen as usual. But, this time we can confirm the binding, by detecting the tag or label. So, at this point we understand that. Tag or labeled immunoassay, is a test to detect substances, that are present in very low concentrations. The test result is observed indirectly. That is by detecting the tag or label bound to, either the antigen or antibody partner. Let's understand role of two important tags or labels, which are radioisodeps and enzymes. Radioisodeps are used in radioimmunoassay. We know that an atom is composed of three subatomic particles. Namely, proton, neutron, and electron. The nucleus of an atom, which is made up of protons and neutrons, together make the mass of the atom. Isodeps are, the atoms of the same element, that have different number of neutrons, in the nucleus. That means, isodeps of same element have, same atomic number, but, different mass number. For example, Hydrogen has three isodeps, protium, deuterium, and tritium. 
Here you can see that no neutron is present in protium. One neutron is present in deuterium. And two neutrons are present in tritium. First two isotopes of hydrogen that is, protium and deuterium are stable, but, the third isotope, that is tritium, it is unstable. These unstable isotopes emit particles or energy, to reach a stable form. They emit radiations such as alpha rays, beta rays and gamma rays. Therefore, such isotopes are known as radioisotopes. Radioisotopes can be covalently attached to proteins. As we know, all antibodies and most of the antigens are proteins in their chemical nature. These radioisotopes thus easily label them. The radiations emitted by the radioisotope can be detected and measured using specialized instruments such as gamma counter. Most popular radioisotope used as a tag is iodine-125. It has a half-life of 60 days which is a relatively long half-life. Let's now understand how enzymes result in detectable immunoassays. Enzymes as tag or label are used in enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. Suppose this is a microtiter well which contains immobilized antigen. This is our antibody specific to the given antigen. We tag or label this antibody by covalently attaching an enzyme to it. Now what kind of enzyme is this? These enzymes convert a colorless substrate into an easily detectable colored end product. Let's say this is our substrate, we add it to the microtiter well. Enzyme bound to the antibody act on this substrate, and colored end product is produced. Such substrates are known as chromogens. A chromogen is a colorless substrate acted on by the enzyme to produce a colored product. These enzymes are also known as reporter enzymes. This is because they produce a color change when the enzyme reacts with its substrate. This color change tells the observer that reaction has taken place. Most commonly used enzyme labels are horseradish peroxidase and alkaline phosphatase. A large selection of substrates is available for performing ELISA with horseradish peroxidase and alkaline phosphatase. Most commonly used substrate for horseradish peroxidase is ophenylene diamond dihydrochloride. Yellow orange end product is produced when the enzyme acts on this substrate. Similarly, for alkaline phosphate substrate used is p phosphate and yellow end product is produced. That's all in today's lecture. In the next video lecture we will study radioimmunoassay. Thank you for watching.